Now we're cooking. Now we're recording. We got things going. I think this is question two. Um, I had a few people ask me about this. I think this is uh, similar or, you know, the question two that I have um, on my end. This is for the discrete assignment. Okay. And make sure we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. I have the chat up if you guys have anything to put in there, but you can unmute yourself if you want. But we're also recording, so that's up to you. But let's talk about this. So, the student council is hosting a drawing to raise money for scholarships. They're selling tickets for $10 each. So no matter what, if you're entering this drawing, you have to spend $10 off the bat, right? They will sell 700 tickets, okay? There is one $3,000 grand prize, two $400 second prizes, and 13 $10 prizes, third prizes. Okay, so that's not bad. You have a lot of chances to win something or at least break even if you get third. You just bought a ticket. Find the expected value for your profit. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if it's worth it. So my uh, expected values that I've been doing, um, I always create the probability distribution table for it. You know, you don't necessarily have to if you could visualize without the table, but I'm going to draw it just in case. And in this particular example, the X is representing your profit. And I think I did one yesterday where we had profit as well. But the only thing that changes here is the fact that to get into this drawing, I have to actually spend $10. So I have to come out of pocket before I do anything. Whereas the other one, I think it was like we roll the dice and you win if you like roll a certain number. You didn't have to spend anything. But if you roll a number, you're going to be in the negative. But here, we're spending money off the bat. We have no choice, right, if we want to enter this raffle so um so let's start there you know let's say i go into this raffle i don't get anything i lose because i you know don't get to chosen right or my ticket doesn't get chosen so i lost ten dollars that's my option that's the first particular option and you know i'm going in order from least to greatest because sometimes that's how they ask you to do it in the table when you're making it up you don't have to necessarily but just because some of the questions ask you to go from least to greatest in terms of your possible outcomes you know of your random variables i'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna do it like that okay uh so all right so this is the majority majority are losing right let's um we'll do all the outcomes then we'll talk about the probabilities you could potentially get third prize i'm gonna go uh third prize right 13 third prizes and you get ten dollars if you if you win third prize so you're breaking even you're not really getting anything you spent ten dollars you won ten dollars so you're at zero let me just um real quick just think oh hey <laughs> you guys found us cool all right <laughs> just in case you came in late i am recording this we're doing this is number two on the discrete probability um assignment and uh, this is the, you know, the one where you're, you're entering, entering a raffle. So unlike yesterday where I had the dice game, you could just play. And if you get a certain number, um, you owe, but you don't have to come out of pocket to play the game unless you, you know, you roll that number. But here you have to come out of pocket to play the game. So, you know, my first outcome was I, you know, I play the game. I spent $10 for the ticket. I didn't get for a second or third, so I lost it, right? So I'm negative 10. The second case is if I get third prize, which is cool, I get $10, but I spent $10 on the ticket. So I'm zero profit there, right? Um, X is representing your profit. And so second prize, I'm going to color coordinate. Second prize, there's two of them, which is nice. Two second prizes is $400. So I go and I spend $10 on my ticket. I got second prize. I won 400. Technically, my profit is 390, right? Because I spent the ooh, I spent the 10 dollars on the ticket, so I'm not really making the 400. I'm making the 400 minus what I spent, right? Um, and then last but not least, I go and I win, which is cool. First prize. There's only one though, grand prize winner, and I get 3,000 dollars. I still spent 2,000 dollars on the ticket. Oopsies. So uh, my profit is twenty nine ninety, right? 
this is the part that I think maybe <clears throat> some were making errors or mistaking or uh, whatever because of the fact that you spend $10 on the ticket, it's affecting your profit. Because remember, X is your profit. That's what your random variable here is representing, it's your profit. So you did spend money on a ticket. So you have to subtract that in terms of profit, right? But now the corresponding probabilities. So I'm gonna go actually from the bottom up because the grand prize is obviously what we all want. So what's the probability of the grand prize? <clears throat> now, I guess I'll put it here. There's only one grand prize winner. Um, let me put a note here. There is a total of 700 tickets. Only one of them is a winner. So only, I guess I don't have to write it. Yeah, I'll write it here for your notes. One grand prize winner out of 700 total tickets. So my probability of winning is one out of 700. And I think I'm gonna convert that to decimal two because we're gonna end up finding the expected value. Oops, where's my calculator? So I'm gonna do one out of 700 here and I'm gonna round it, 0 0.0014. I'll put that here, approximately 0 0.0014. So there is a one out of 700 chance of me hitting the grand prize, which would give me a profit of 2,990 because I spent $10 on the ticket and one to 3,000. Remember here, I had somebody sending me something and you know the right-hand column was not probabilities, it was something else. Remember the right-hand column for probability distribution table, they're probabilities, the probability of the outcome, right? What is the, you know, a relative frequency? What is the probability that this happens? So what's the probability that I get the second prize? Second prize is in green and there's two second prize winners. So I'll write that for your notes. So two out of 700 are second, uh, second prize uh, winners, right? So the probability of winning second is two out of 700, whatever the heck that is. In decimal form, 0 0.0029, rounded to four, approximately 0 0.0029. Now, the only reason I'm putting it, you know, in decimal form is because I'm gonna end up doing the expected outcome <laughs> and um, and I'm going to probably have it in decimal form. The red was my third prize, and there's 13. There's 13 third prize, third prize winners, which is cool. At least 13 people are breaking even. But the probability of winning third, there's 13 out of 700 possible uh, outcomes, right? So 13 out of 700 is the probability that I win third prize, 0 0.0186, right? Rounded to, again, four, 0 0.0186, approximately 0.0186. And the last but not least, um, if there's total 700, let me show you this, there's total 700, right? Well, 13 of them got a uh, third prize, so let's subtract that from the total. Two of them got second prize, so let's subtract that. And one of them won grand prize, so let's subtract that. So that means that there's 684 that lost in this raffle, which I guess would make sense. The majority are gonna, you know, lost. The majority are gonna lose, right? Not everybody can be the grand prize winner. Um, <laughs> so the probability of losing your $10 is 684 out of the 700 which I would expect that to be the highest probability, right? Because most likely, this sounds horrible, 0 0.9771, 0 0.9771 rounded, 0 0.9771. But you know, we're calculating probability statistically. So it's like, all right, do I, yeah, do I take the chance? Am I willing to take the L, losing $10 if I can make the 3,000? Well, let's see what um, on average we expect our outcome to be if we continue, right? To do something like this. So expected value, if you remember yesterday, is the same thing as your mean, which I'm using my notation because we're gonna see it. Mu, remember I, I talked about this like I think in week three. And if you forgot, it's a good thing I'm talking about it again because we're gonna see it coming up um, maybe in a couple weeks. Actually, we're going to see it a lot. So remember, X bar was your sample mean. 
and this is your Greek letter called mu, which is your population mean. And it's very important to know, you know, when to use which notation when you're talking about sample versus population. And the expected value here is the same thing as the average or the mean of the probability distribution table. And I use the population um, notation because of the fact that these are all the possible outcomes, right? Population represents like all of. So these are all the possible outcomes and their corresponding probabilities. And so I'm using the proper notation to go with that. Just for practice, just for knowledge, right? Because you're going to see it again. But if you recall, I think it was yesterday, right? I said the, you know, formula, if you're doing it by hand, this is what it looks like. <laughs> It's, you know, you, you take each of these random variables, you multiply it by the corresponding probability, and then you add it up. Now, you could do this by hand, and then you could do it by the calculator. I showed you both, right? Some of you, or I think majority of you preferred by hand because it might be a little faster. But, I mean, I could show both again. You're taking negative 10 times this probability. You could use the fraction. You could use the decimal, whatever you want. I'll just use the decimal because it makes it easier right now. Zero times, you know, the 0 0.01. 0 0.0186, which we know that's zero, but I'm putting it for your notes. 390 times the 0 0.0029. And I'm writing all this down for your, again, for your notes. The 290, you don't necessarily have to write it all down when you calculate it, but it's good for your notes if you ever have to refer back, you know, when you're coming back to study this again, because the final is cumulative, just so you know, right? So I'm checking the chat too, if you guys have questions. So negative 10 times 0 0.9771 plus, well, zero. I'm not gonna put the zero, because this is zero, right? It's not gonna affect anything. 390 times 0 0.0029. 390 times point, I already forgot what I said, 0 0.0029. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> Careful, you put this the right stuff. Plus, and then this last one, 2990 times um, 0 0.0014. Come on, okay. Negative 4.45, rounded to the nearest cent. Okay, that's a decimal, not a, looks like a negative 4.45, rounded to the nearest cent. I guess that's a, uh, unfortunate right because on average I'm losing money so I mean which I guess we would expect because the majority are not winning for a second or third prize so you know depending on you know what you want to do then ten dollars might not be so bad to potentially you know <laughs> enter and if you lose you lose but on average my expected value my expected profit right in this case X is profit would be a negative so again it so would not if, be. go ahead oh professor so if we're doing it on the calculator doing the calculator version we wouldn't use the x of the line over it we would use the e of x correct so if you're doing it on the calculator the calculator way right you mm -hmm. want to input these into your uh l1 and l2 so stat and edit right yeah. So I'm going to put um, in my L1 negative 10. I don't need to clear this because I'm going to go past that zero. I'm putting 390 because <clears throat> I wanted to show this anyway. And then 2990, right? And then the corresponding probabilities, which the first one was point. And you can actually, you could, I'll just do it with a fraction two to show you that you could do it that way. And you see it turns it to a decimal. Um, 13 out of 700, All right? Turns it to the decimal and then two out of 700. So you could potentially go straight to your calculator if you want also. I showed it by hand, I showed it with the table. You could go straight to, even you could just put it in here instead of writing it down, it's up to you. Um, so now I'm gonna calculate the average because this is my table. And, and this should be probability. So this is what I expected to be less than one. These have to be the probabilities of these outcomes, right? So I'm gonna go back to stat and calc, just like we did in week three, one var stats. And my list is L1, that's my X. 
and my frequency list in this particular case are like relative frequencies, L2, that's where I put them. And if you forgot how to put that in there, if it wasn't there, you know that like on top of the number one, you have L1, on top of the number two, you have L2 and so on and so forth. So you press second and then whatever number to get whatever list you want and then calculate approximately. So I'm, I wonder if I typed something in when I did this. So approximately negative 4.39 it shouldn't be extremely different, but remember that I did round these here. <clears throat> and then the calculator, I put the actual fraction as well. So sometimes when you round, this is a good example of this too. When you round um, too much and you use the value to calculate something else, you can see there's slight you know, changes to your um, overall outcome. So sometimes that happens. So, so like I've had students round like to 0.98 and 0 0.02 and then they use that to calculate other things and then they get it, something in their answer that's off. Now I would probably double check these and make sure that this still adds up to this just to verify, but it's not extremely off so it could be a rounding thing, but I want you to see that too. So, but it's, a, it's still a loss, about $4 in this case, 39 cents, in this case, 45 cents. So I'm gonna check this, but um. This is also, if you ever want to find the standard deviation of a probability distribution, it could do that too. In this case, 115. So I'm noticing the, oh, I'm noticing the same issues on the actual homework. So when I'm doing the, the calculations, like they're just slightly off mm -hmm. every time and then it gets marked wrong. Well, uh, it, de it depends, right? Like this one, this one shouldn't be this off, it could be again, like I said, because I rounded these or maybe I made something here when I plug that in, which I should check. But um, or let me check my my um, sometimes check your list, too, because if you have an extra, you know, even an extra line here, it could be calculating something in there. But this is this is fine. Check your numbers here. Sometimes you put them in wrong. You know what I mean? Um, this is more accurate because I put the fraction and it didn't round it and it took the whole value in my calculation. So, you know, um, if you're using the calculator versus, you know, let's say rounding it and calculating there, if you're getting it wrong and you know you're doing it right, then check, check to make sure it's a rounding thing. Check your stuff, check your work. You know what I'm saying? It happens sometimes in statistics. And when we get into other stuff later on too, Sometimes we get different values depending on whether we use like Desmos versus TI-84 versus Excel versus it happens versus doing it by hand. So um, if that happens to you, check rounding, you know, maybe don't round with before you finish your actual thing. Or if you're going to do something like this, maybe you should take five to six de uh, digits to the right of the decimal place to actually do your calculation. Um, you know, check check that stuff, check rounding, check check that kind of stuff. And if that is still giving you the wrong answer, then check your numbers, email your instructor, you know what I'm saying? Um, and maybe it's a slight error in the numbers that you're using, if that makes sense. And and so that that is something in statistics that does happen once in a while. You you do have slight changes in the final result based on based on rounding. Um, and based on, you know, sometimes different technology um, or versus doing it by hand. So you guys should be using either the TI-84 or Desmos by hand. I mean, not so much. This is okay by hand as long as you maybe round this a little less or something. But, um, but if that happens, it could be that kind of situation, okay? So think about that. You should think about that in statistics. It happens. And then if it's like, you get to the point where you go, this is, I tried it with rounding, I tried it with the exact values, and this is not working. Check your numbers, maybe something here was off. Um, or, you know, talk to your instructor and be like, listen, this is what I did. I like to see screenshots of my students' questions. Show me what you did so that I can see like where we went wrong. So this is what I did. This is what's happening. I tried it rounding. I tried it not. What the heck is going on? <laughs> um, um, <laughs> okay. 
Um, let me, uh, I'm going to stop this recording because I'm going to have both questions.